Here's a quick peek at how to do this first CSS assignment that we're going to do in computer science. Uh, I sent you an email uh, that has, if I can just find it, I sent you an email that has a link to the code that we're going to use today. If you look in your redpride.net email, uh, you should find this link for CSS number one. And also on that email, I have uh, included a copy of the handout that summarizes this and tells what all the requirements are. And you might notice on the handout that you have to write what's called a rule set for heading one, heading two, heading three, and paragraphs. And you also have to use some place in the CSS page the color property, the text align property, the background color property, font size, and font style. Those are requirements for today's assignment. In this video, I'm going to show a little demo of what that looks like so you'll see how it works a little bit. Uh, this will be a project on code.org, so when it's finished, I'll be able to see it. You don't have to submit it or anything like that. Uh, let's go back to here. I'm going to click the link that is in the email. That's going to bring up a page that looks like this. I used uh, Harry Potter as a theme for today, and it, it doesn't matter if you've seen Harry Potter or not. These are the four houses of, of uh, Hogwarts. Eh, it's just a file that I needed to use. Uh, or that I made to use. Down at the bottom you got to click view code and then it will take you to code.org and you've got the, EA, uh, the HTML document right here. It's on index.html and all of the code is in here. You'll see the heading one tags, heading two, heading three, and paragraphs. We are going to be concentrating on this page over here, the style.css. CSS is all about adding some style to your HTML. Everything looks pretty plain so far when we do HTML. We're going to style it up a little bit and you do that by using what's called CSS cascading style sheets uh, and I'm going to show you how. Alright, so if I click over here the CSS looks a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to click over here where the page is and you will see a little bit about the body right there. I'll come back to that in a minute. But let's start by doing this. I'm going to show you how to write what's called a rule set for an H1 heading. Here it goes. You just start by typing H1. Uh, whatever uh, properties and values I put in are going to affect any H1 headings. Now, uh, to start this rule set, you have to um, use a curly bracket. That's next to the letter P on your keyboard. You have to shift to get a curly bracket. I'm going to press Enter two or three times here. And then I'm going to close the curly brackets, and that's right next to the opening curly bracket on the keyboard. Now, inside those curly brackets, or braces, whatever you want to call them, this is where we put some... Uh, properties and values. And I put on that handout, if I hop back to that for a second, if I, I put on that handout, there are five different properties that I want you to explore a little bit. And you can use them anywhere on the CSS page. You don't have to use them like in every rule set, but you got to use them somewhere. So I'll show you uh, what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use the color property. I'll just type the word color. Then you put a colon, that's double dots. And now on code.org, it's going to come up with a whole bunch of colors that you could pick from. Or you could just type one if you want to. Uh, probably anything you type is going to work, but there's a whole bunch here. And this isn't even the full list. Uh, there, are, there are more uh, past this. Um, so let's say I go dark slate blue. Sure, why not? No, that's not a good example. Let's not do dark slate blue. Let's do something that's going to pop out like red. All right. Now at the end of a an expression in CSS, you also put a semicolon. So it looks like that. It's color, colon, red, semicolon. And if you look over on the right hand side, you'll see that the H1 heading did indeed turn red. All right, because I told it to. I made a rule set that H1 headings would be red. Now I can add other properties if I want to here. I can say text dash align. Let's try that. Text dash line. Um, and when I put the colon in, I get some possibilities. Could be center, uh, justify, left, right. I'm going to do center and semicolon at the end. And now if you look again over on the right hand side, the H1 heading that is red is also centered because I told it to me. I made a rule for H1 headings that they should be centered. By the way, if there were more H1 headings on the page, they would all have this. 
And uh, maybe I'll also do this. I'll do font dash size and put a colon there. Font size is measured in pixels. So let's say, and I'm going to make it really big to exaggerate. I'll say 50px semicolon. And if you'll look over on the right-hand side, and that's not too, too terribly large. I did 50 pixels, and the text is now bigger. So I made three properties on the H1 heading. I set the color to red. I set the alignment to center. Text-align is center, and font-size is 50 pixels. Well, all right, so let's make another rule set. Let's go, I'm going to press enter a couple of times here, and I'll make a rule set for an H2. That's part of the requirements, by the way. I'll make a set of curly brackets there, starting curly bracket, ending curly bracket. And all right, so for an H2, let's say that I want the uh, text style. Is that text style or font style? I think that one is font style, font-style colon, and I've got a few choices here, like italic, normal, oblique. I'll do italic, and then I'll put a semicolon in there. And if, again, the if you look over there at the part that says a short description, it is now italicized. Let's go color um, yellow. i got to put my colon in there. Yellow, semicolon. Now I'm going to do something that doesn't show up really well right now, but I'm going to do something else here that, that will help it show up. Here's another property that you can set for a HTML element that can be kind of interesting. You can There's a property for background dash color colon. And on this one, uh, maybe I'll just go black, B-L-A-C-K semicolon. And again, if you'll look over at the right-hand side where it says a short description, that, that part that says a short description is an H2 tag. If you went back over and looked at the index.html, you would see it's an H2, a heading 2. And I just told it to be italic and yellow for the text color and give it a black background. I could also, let's just see how this looks. Let's go text-align and center that and look at that if you look over at my page there that doesn't look too bad I don't mind it I don't like don't mind that a whole lot um, now to finish this up I still would have to write uh, I'd still have to write a rule for an h3 so I go h3 curly bracket close the curly bracket and maybe my h3s are going to be uh, color green and you can use any colors you want I don't care what colors you use and um, I'll go font dash size I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger so I'll make them font dash 18 pixels semicolon there that's really not much bigger than what they were to begin with maybe I'll go 30 pixels and that does make them noticeably bigger you'll see and uh, and let's make sure I'm gonna hop back over here and look at that handout here real quick uh, oh font style did I do a font style already I haven't done a font style yet so let's do this yes I did I did an italic so I think I've done all of them right I've done color uh, I've done text align I've done uh, background color I've done a font size I've done a font style so I've got them all in there and that's what you have to do you got to put them all in there someplace couple last things um, you also have to write a, a, a rule for paragraphs so I'm going to come down here to the bottom and I'm going to put in a rule per, for paragraphs and even if it's just um, uh, even if it's just changing the color of the paragraphs, let's make it aqua. We'll go aqua for the paragraphs. I'm not sure I like aqua. Uh, let's go gray. Dim gray. There we go. And put a semicolon. Get in the habit of putting a semicolon at the end. So I have a rule there for the paragraphs. And here's something else you can do. Up here at the top, where there it says, uh, and this CSS page came with a body rule, and it says background white. Well, this is up to you, but you could change the background of the entire page. If you go up there, like I just made it light blue, and I'm not sure the color combination I got going on over there is the greatest ever. But, excuse me, um, 
but you know, today we're we're not necessarily after the prettiest color combinations or or whatever. We're after understanding how this works. So there it is. Look at that. Um, I have used I've I've created rule sets for heading one for H1, H2, H3, and paragraph. I've done that. I have used in the on the page someplace. I have used the color property, the text align property, the font size property the font style property and the background color property. Oh, all right. And those are the required things. Now, remember that when you start this and we've done this before, I didn't have to hit remix because it's my code, right? You would have to hit remix to be able to edit. So when you first get to the page, hit remix, remix, you also might want to rename, but when you get it all put together, um, it will uh, it will automatically save and I'll be able to see it. So yeah, there you go. Have at.